in this video we are going to let R be a ring, S is going to be a subring of R, and I is going to be an ideal of R. And the question that I want to look at in this particular video is what is the smallest subring of R that contains both the subring S and the ideal I. Now, the smallest subset that contains both of the sets, both S and I, is, of course, the union. But we know from a previous assignment that S union I is not, in general, a subring. So the smallest subring that contains both S and I is not the union. So we need a definition. And uh, we're going to call the smallest subring of R that contains both S and I, that smallest subring is called the join of S and I. And uh, one thing that it's important to realize is that obviously S union I has to be a subset of the join. Well, I kind of want to draw a schematic picture of what's going on here. We're going to have the ring R up here, and because I need a name for it, I'm going to let T be the join of S and I. So R contains T, and T contains I, and T contains S, and of course, S and I both contain their intersection. Now, T is the join, S is, S is a subgroup. I want to remember that I is an ideal, and R is the main ring in this particular picture. And T is the smallest subring that contains the set S union I. And uh, what I first of all want to talk about is what does smallest mean here? Uh, so the word smallest means this particular thing. If R prime is a subring of R and S union I happens to be included in R prime, then R prime has to be at least as big as T. In other words, T has to be a subset of R prime. So the join is going to be a subset of any subring that contains S union I. So that's the first thing that I want to remember about, uh, that I want to make a note of on, in terms of the join. Well, let's continue on. Uh, let me again copy this figure down. So that is the join. And we have I here, and we have S here, and we've got the intersection of those two things down here. Now, um, my question this time is going to be, what kind of elements must belong to the join that must belong to this subring T. Well, let's see, since S union I belongs to T, uh, we know that uh, little s inside S will imply that little s belongs to T. And uh, we know that little a belonging to I will imply that A belongs to T. 
and uh, T is a subring. So that's going to imply that S plus A has to belong to T. And this is going to be true for all little s inside s and for all little a inside capital A, capital I. Now, I want to kind of collect all of those things. It makes sense to set the notation capital S plus capital I. That's going to be the set of little s's plus little a's, where little s is pulled from capital S and little a is pulled from I. And because of these comments up here, it's clear that S plus I has to be a subset of T. And I'm going to actually ask the question here. Is it possible that S plus I is a subring of our ring R? Because if the answer is yes, then that's going to actually imply that T and S plus I are the same thing. Because remember, any subring that contains S union I has got to include all of T. And we'll look at that in a few minutes. Um, so this is an important question. Is S plus I a subring of R? Well, we can investigate that using our old friend, the subgroup, the subring criterion theorem. So I'm going to let X and Y be elements of S plus I. And the question is that we want to ask is, is S the questions that we want to ask are, is x minus y inside s plus i, and is s and is x times y inside s plus i? So those are our questions. Well, let's look at this. Uh, since x is inside s plus i, that tells me x can be written as s1 plus a1, uh, where s1 is inside s and a1 is inside i. And y is inside s plus i, so it's the same kind of thing. y is going to be s2 plus a2, where S2 is inside S, and A2 is inside I. So at this point, we can now look at this. If I look at X minus Y, that's going to be S1 plus A1 minus S2 plus A2. And I can clean that up using ring properties. And this becomes S1 minus S2 plus A1 minus A2. And now what I want to remember is that S1 and S2 are both in S. Consequently, this element is in S. And I want to note that A1 and A2 are both in I. So this element is in I. As a consequence, what we have seen is that x minus y does indeed belong to s plus i. Now, what about xi? So xi is going to be s1 plus a1 times s2 plus a2, and that's going to be equal to S1, S2, plus A1 times S2, plus S1 times A2, plus A1 times A2. And I want to look at where these things live. Well, again, what I want to notice is that this term here is definitely inside S because S1 
and S2 are both inside of S. And I also know this particular element is clearly inside I because A1 and A2 are both inside I. But of course, that leaves these two things here. But I want to remember that I is an ideal. And I also want to note that um, S1 and S2, they belong to S, but S is a subset of R. So S1 and S2 actually belong to the ring R as well. And the definition of ideal forces these two things to also be inside I. And I need a little bit more room, so I'll give myself a little bit more room. These two things are in I by the definition of ideal. Well, what we now have is that x times y is equal to something in S plus the sum of three things that are in I and the sum of three things that are in I is in I. In other words, what we now have is that x, I, x times y is indeed equal to something inside S, that's this part here, plus something inside I, that's this part here. And as a consequence, what we have is that x times y is indeed in S plus I. So in other words, S plus I is indeed a subring by the subring criteria theorem. Now what I want to think about is what does that actually say? So to recap some things that we know, we know that S plus I is a full-fledged subring of the ring R. We also know that S union I is clearly a subset of S plus I. Uh, that's easy enough to show if little s is inside capital S, then little s is equal to little s plus zero, and this zero belongs to I. So this is indeed inside S plus I. And uh, we also know that if A is inside I, then A can be written as 0 plus A. And this A, this 0 is inside set S. So this mess is also inside S plus I. And we also know that T is the join of, of um, I and S. And so what that says is that we've already seen that S plus I has to be a subset of T, but these two facts here will say that T has to be a subset of S plus I because that's the definition of that's the definition of join. And these two facts together will imply that T is equal to S plus I. So what I want to do is I want to kind of recap what we've now shown. So the join of S plus I is just, rather, yeah, the, the join of S and I. Let me fix that up. <coughs> 
got to get my notation straight here. The join of S and I has now been shown to be S plus I. And so what we have is this kind of a situation. We have R is up here. We have S plus I is here. We have I is over here. We have S is over here. And we have this particular intersection down here. This is our subring. This is an ideal. And it turns out that if we have that much, then this will be the join of I and S. So that, uh, that concludes this particular video.